Hi everybody. Welcome to Story Station with Words Alive. My name is Sandy and we're going to read a great book today. Today's book is called Manfish, a story of Jacques Cousteau. And the author is Jennifer Byrne and the illustrator is Eric Kubarat. Let's get our bodies ready so we can see these wonderful pictures of under the sea. Get your O's ready. Put them up to your eyes and open them nice and big and wide so you can see all of the beautiful fish underneath the ocean in this wonderful biography. Now, get your C's ready. Put them behind your ears and turn up the volume so you can hear everything that Jennifer Byrne has to say about Jacques Cousteau. She was the author, and she's writing this true story about Jacques Cousteau's life. That's called a biography. And now, get your pinchers ready, open them really big, so your voice box can yell out all of the things that you see and hear. Let's get ready for our song. I hope you can help me. The title's on the front, the title's on the front, Hi-ho, Biblio, the title's on the front. The author writes the words, the author writes the words. Hi-ho, Biblio, the author writes the words. The illustrator draws, the illustrator draws. Hi-ho, Biblio, the illustrator draws. The spine binds the book, the spine binds the book. Hi-ho, Biblio, the spine binds the book. And now it's time to read, and now it's time to read. Hi-ho, Biblio, and now it's time to read. So Manfish is the name of this story. And like I said before, it's a biography. It's about the life of Jacques Cousteau. And that means this man really lived. He was alive, and the author, Jennifer Byrne, and the illustrator, Eric Pirate, Py is going to share with you their story of Jacques Cousteau. We know it has something to do with the ocean. What did the illustrator do to show that Jacques was underwater? Can you tell from the illustrations? I definitely see some fish. But what are these? If you guess bubbles, you are right. We'd like to thank Chronicle Books for letting us read this beautiful story, Manfish. And there he is with his hands stretched out under the ocean. Bubbles rising through silence of the sea, silvery beads of breath from a man deep, deep down in a strange and shimmering ocean land. A manfish swimming, diving to the unknown, exploring the underwater world no one has ever seen. And no one could ever have imagined. So this story took place a long time ago before people thought it would be safe to go exploring in the ocean. Our story starts many years before in France with a little boy born under the summer sun. His parents named him Jacques. From the very beginning, little Jacques loved water, the way it felt on his hands, his face, his body, and water made him wonder. He wondered why ships floated, why he floated, and why rocks sank. Have you ever thrown a rock in the water? One day, Jacques read a story about a man who went underwater 
by breathing through a long tube. Jacques tried, and he discovered that it seemed impossible. He dreamed that someday he would be able to breathe underwater for real. At night, Jacques dreamed he could fly with the birds among the clouds, with his arms stretched out like wings. Jacques spent his days playing, experimenting, and crafting. He wrote little books that he illustrated with his own drawings, and he was fascinated by machines. He studied blueprints and built a model of a crane that was as tall as he was, and it actually worked. Movies fascinated Jacques, too. He wanted to know how they were made how the cameras worked, how the chemicals made pictures appear on the film. Jacques saved his allowance penny by penny until he had enough money to buy a small home movie camera. The first thing he did was take it apart and put it back together again. Then he began to film everything around him. He put his brothers, cousin, parents, and friends in all his movies. He dressed up as the villain and the painted on with a painted on mustache, and he made some very villainous films. Jacques was always the star, the director, the writer, and the cameraman. He was able to do it all. When Jacques finished school, he joined the French Navy. His ship sailed around the world, and everywhere he went, he filmed what he saw. In China, he filmed men catching fish with their bare hands. They held their breath underwater for many minutes, and Jacques wondered what that would feel like. One day at the beach, a friend gave Jacques a pair of goggles and rubber frames and glass to look through. Jacques wore them into the ocean. Beneath the water, he was surrounded by silvery green forests of sea plants and fish he had never seen before. Everything was silent and shimmering. It was a whole new world. And when he came up, he saw cars and people, buildings, telephone poles. Once again, he went below the magical underwater world. And at that moment, Jacques knew his life was changed forever. His eyes had been opened to the wonders of the sea. Jacques and his friends, Felipe and Didi, began to dive together. They experimented to see how long they could stay underwater and how deep they could go. Jacques created a waterproof case for his camera to film the amazing kingdom, and his friends were exploring beneath the surface with him. They made rubber suits to keep themselves warm and flippers to help them kick better. But Jacques wanted to stay down longer than just one breath at a time. He realized that he needed to take more air with him. Enough air to explore the mystery, mysterious depths and vast expanses of the ocean. To swim through the sea as free as a fish. He wanted to become a man fish and he began to work on just how to do it. On a warm summer day, Jacques stepped in to the blue Mediterranean Sea with his new invention. He called it the aqualung because aqua means water and lungs are the part of our body that holds the air we breathe. Below the surface, Jacques swam and glided and dove. He flips and he did somersaults. He stood upside down on one finger and laughed bubbles into the sea. 
Jacques could breathe beneath the ocean. Now he could swim across miles of the ocean, his body feeling what only scales had felt. Seals had felt. Fish had felt. The water made him feel like he was flying, just like in his dream. And Jacques had done it. He had become a man fish. Jacques was ready to explore the ocean of the world. He needed a boat. He found a big old wooden navy ship called the Calypso. And in a year, he turned it from a warship into an explorer ship. Jacques, Philippe, and Didi gathered a crew, their aqua lungs and hopes and dreams, and set off to explore the inside of the sea to film a world that no one had ever seen before. And on their journey, they dove deep into the seascape of plants, green and purple prickly plants, red branchy plants, spongy plants, wispy feathery swaying plants, slow dancing to the rhythms of the sea. They discovered plants that could feel you, plants that could poison you, plants that looked like fish and fish that looked like plants. The camera captured camouflage scorpion fish, why toads had poisonous spines and Dorado's brilliant shiny fish that glowed with the colors of emeralds, sapphires, rubies, checkerboard fish with red and white checks from head to toe, long fanged fish with great big tires and huge saucer eyes. They were called truck fish. And on the bottom, they found the pink ghost crab with eyes as long stalks buried so deep in the sand that they looked like a garden of eyes. And flute fish with heads like horses and bodies the shapes of tubes sticking out of rocky openings like pencils in a cup. Everywhere the Calypso went, Jacques and his crew made films of that what they saw, films that played in movie theaters, films that played on TV. Millions of people all over the world discovered the wonders of the sea for the very first time with Jacques, Philippe, Didi, and their adventurous crew. And Jacques spent most of his life making movies about the ocean. He saw something happening, something very shocking. Plants that used to be alive and healthy were being poisoned. Fish were sick and started dying. Jacques saw that people, without realizing it, were slowly killing the sea and its creatures by dumping garbage and poisonous chemicals into the ocean that he loved so much. Jacques knew what he had to do. He had to make movies, movies to warn people, movies to save the sea. And Jacques spoke to the presidents, to kings and queens, to people all over the earth, asking them to help save the oceans and the planets. And then he spoke to children. Jacques dreamed that someday it would be you exploring worlds never seen, never imagined, whole new worlds, silent and shimmery, worlds that are yours to discover and to care for 
and to love. Wow, he sure had an adventurous life. I am so glad that you listened to Manfish, the story of Jacques Cousteau, the real biography of a wonderful man who took an adventure under the ocean, filmed it, and brought it to all the world to see. Do you think that's something you would like to do? Do you think you would want to get on a wetsuit and an aqua lung? Right now, they have these tanks available, but you have to do something very special before you use this oxygen tank. You have to take classes in order to be able to go underwater so you know how to use it properly. And here Jacques is with his flippers, his oxygen tank, and his glasses, and his tubes in his mouth to help him breathe. I think that would be a fabulous adventure, don't you? Well, I was so glad to read this story to you, and I hope to see you next time on Story Station. Bye-bye.